All right, test one, two, say. Test one, two. Test one, two, one, two, two, two. Okay. Am I to look at you? <laughs> look at me, yeah. Uh, okay. Good morning and welcome to our May 7th edition of Pillars of Success. My name is Earl Sparrow. I'm your host for this morning. And uh, I want to dedicate this show. We know Mother's Day is tomorrow. I want to dedicate this show to my beautiful mother, Sandra Sparrow. Um, Sandra Gail Randall Sparrow. That's a government <laughs> name if you want to look her up. But uh, she was born June 15, 1957. And uh, she means the world to me. And uh, if she wasn't five and a half hours away from me, we might hit the road tomorrow after church to go surprise her. But uh, mom, if you're watching this, I love you. We all love you. Because uh, of success family and Fort Myers family know uh, your son is doing some good things here. So I'm not shaming your name or anybody else's uh, uh, in our Sparrow family. And also my grandmother, Gladys Edwards, I love you. Uh, can't wait to see you guys again. We dedicate this show to you two mothers and all the other mothers that are watching in the South Florida region. Uh, have a wonderful weekend. You mean the world to us. We wouldn't be here without you, and that's a fact. Uh, enjoy the show. We have Crystal uh, Lance Johnson in, in the house today, and she's going to share some information about the STARS uh, community forum that she's the president of. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. The City of Fort Myers has supported new and early stage businesses by providing a location and technical assistance to new business owners. Tenants also have access to free business consulting, professional receptionist office, free Wi-Fi, two conference rooms, a large training room, copier and fax. Many new businesses now operating successfully have had their start at the Southwest Florida Enterprise Center. If you have a business idea, call 239-321-7085 and come join us. Hello, I'm James Middlebrooks with the Community Press. I'm here to let you know that we have a community paper that is just going all around Fort Myers, Florida. I have three other people that are working with me, and that is Veronica Barber, Pablo Williams, and we call him Bodie, who is our circulation manager. We are working for you. We want you to know that this is the community paper for us. We want to put stories about what's happening, good stories about what's happening in our community. We want to do things on the local level, on the state level, on the national level. But we are sincerely about the local level. But we are so happy that we can report to you 28 pages of good stuff. We're reporting about the churches around this community. We're reporting about the community, about the uh, fraternities and sororities. We're reporting about people who a lady just, a lady just graduated from high school and she's 78 years old. I think that's remarkable. We are reporting about people who live the longest around here. We have a young lady who's 116 years and she's still around. We love what we are doing and we are proud of giving you the report to you from the community press. Thank you and have a great day. After a car accident, call me, Attorney Joe North. I am here for you and for your family. How do you go about getting good medical treatment? Who's going to pay for those medical bills? And what about money for your pain and suffering? And what about the lost wages? For more than 25 years, I've been helping clients with those same questions. For more than 25 years, families have trusted me with their accident cases. So after an accident, call me, Joe North. I am here for you. Happy New Year.
here and welcome to Tax Care. We are located at 2227 Fowler Street in Fort Myers. Come see us and get your huge refund. Have you ever been somewhere and felt like you didn't get the refund you deserve? Come see us. Have you ever been somewhere and felt like they ripped you off? Come see us. Have you ever gone somewhere and gotten your taxes prepared and have gone back to get your refund and they had moved? Come see us. Come see us and get your huge refund. We are waiting on you. Hablo en español. Let me tell you, hey, yo. CTV Political, I'm W.R. Sparrow Jr., uh, your host, and we have in our house Ms. Crystal Lyons Johnson, our community activist and the president of the Dunbar you know, Stars uh, Community Forum. And uh, could you welcome to the show? Uh, thank you for accepting and coming on to talk about such an important uh, uh, place that has so much potential that uh, I think. I think you and I think you agree is kind of underused right now. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you for having me. And yes, that is my whole point for going to the STARS Advisory Board meetings is to be a voice for our community residents, our local residents in the area um, who are not, well, who do not have access to the STARS to the full potential of children ages 14 to 18. Now, is this just a children's facility? or aftercare thing, or is it a community facility? It is a sports complex. It is supposed to service children from age um, six to 14. But the only thing is we're having so many problems in our area that they have, they absolutely turn children away. Children that come to the Stars Complex at the age of 14, 15 before mm -hmm. 530 are turned away and they're not welcome. So, you know, for me, that's kind of, why would you do that? Or you'll uh, provide a safe haven for these children all the way up until 14 and then say, okay, there's no longer a place for you here in our program. So what do the kids that came up from 6 to 14 do when they turn 15? They can just go outside and play basketball? <laughs> that's it. They can only be, they're not welcome inside of the stars during the program hours. Do they let those kids transfer over to being helpers? They are welcome. Or? They are welcome. During the summer, they, have, they do offer a um, job program somewhat, uh, and they will hire youth over the age of 14 to come in and assist, but uh, that's usually during the summer, and it's very limited. It's not like you can welcome in. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I think uh, you through Facebook, invited me to a STARS Advisory Board meeting and um, sent me another one, and you sent me another one, and I tried <laughs> to get up there. I, I actually got a ticket one time, so you owe me $15. Uh -oh. They waived it, but uh, uh, I didn't have 25 cents. or 50, I didn't have any change on me, so I said, well, let me slip in here real quick. Yes, and, I appreciate your support. And uh, sat down for a few minutes, came back out, and take it on the way. But anyway... Um, Tell us about when does the STARS Advisory Board meet and they, how can anybody get involved as far as coming in? Well, the STARS Advisory Board meets every third Wednesday of the month mm -hmm. from 5, I'm sorry, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. That time for me is also a struggle. Mm -hmm. So I know most of the community just are not able to make it. Um, that's another issue for me. I feel like the, the board meeting should be held at the STARS. I feel that um, they should be held at a later time so that the public can actually come in and have something to say. But they host it downtown in the city hall, and mm -hmm. it's from 4 to 5 p.m. Well, how um, STARS is not the only city-run complex Right? Sports Correct. complex, right? Correct. Do the other, what are the others that they have in the city? 
Um, well, I usually, uh, we have the, what is it called? The Aquatic Center. Mm -hmm. um, and that's basically about the pool. Uh, we have the City of Fort Myers Aquatic Center. You also have Golf View Pool. And their hours are Monday through, I mean, Golf View, I think, is Monday through Friday, Saturday. And their hours are from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. The Aquatic Center is seven days a week. And their hours are also 10 to 5, whereas the Stars does not open their pool to the public until 5 o'clock in the evening. <clears throat> um, I'm, I'm excited to report, though, that this summer uh, they are going to try opening the pool from 12 to 4 p.m. on Tuesdays and Thursdays only. And they have expressed to me that we need to utilize the pool or we will no longer have access. All right. <laughs> Boy. All right, so here's my... Now I'm scratching, now I'm getting nervous, now I'm getting mad. Um, how... Uh, my children, I, uh, I had to take my children out to Florida Gulf Coast University uh, a few summers ago to learn how to swim. We're in Florida. <laughs> We're right next to the Gulf where water is everywhere, canals and all this other stuff like that. Um, my, my children uh, swim. I, had, uh, I was staying out in Lehigh. I was renting a spot where uh, a few years ago and they had a little pool. I had a little pool. So they jumped in and they kind of knew how to swim. But swimming is usual to lose it. It's not like you can just get on a bike and you just got it right. again. So uh, their swimming skills have decreased and diminished. I've noticed when um, I'm at Sunsplash out in uh, Cape Coral, I notice when I take my kids to, uh, uh, what is it, Wet n Wild or, or what's the name of that thing, uh, Legoland Water Park or something yes, like that. Yes, yes. It's kids that are swimming, but the kids that look like my kids have on life preserver jackets correct, and correct. they have on the little things on their arms and... And it was so embarrassing because my eight-year-old daughter had on the, uh, uh, the little life jacket thing. And it was another girl, uh, a little white girl that she met there at the park. And she said, why do you have that? My daughter said, I'm only eight years old. She said, I'm eight. <laughs> I was like, ooh, bird, I hurt. I'm sorry, Jalen. I failed you as a parent. I'm yeah. sorry. But... Um, uh, Specifically, when it deals with so many kids, and there are so many drownings that should could be avoided, um, especially in the black community. <laughs> right. And I think, to me, uh, there's there's a systematic racial thing going on with that because there are parks across the country that kids could not swim in the public pools, and there was no black pool that they can go to anyway. So, especially inner city kids. Uh, didn't know how to swim, so guess what? They didn't want their kids around the pool to swim because they didn't know how to swim. Now, my mom, I had to drive all the way, I had to ride my bike, and my mom would drive me all the way about two or three miles away from my house to go to Willie Gallimore Center in St. Augustine to learn how to swim. Me and my brother, okay. my brothers learned how to swim at that park, which is exactly <laughs> what uh, Stars Complex is uh, for the, that community. Uh, but how does, how does, how is it uh, a part that taxpayers' money pay for? The pool, water's clear and everything else. How does that happen to be closed the majority of the year and then only open for two days during the summer? For me, that's a good question. I ask that question all the time. They tell me they have contracts with um, Dunbar High School swim team. Um, or they'll have a contract with the quality life, but I don't understand this contract thing when it should be open to the public. Our youth in the area need something to do, especially in the state of Florida where it's 90 degrees outside, and you say, no, you can't come until 5. And then usually during the summer, it's raining at 5. Between 5 and 7, you start to see showers, so their time is cut severely. I've been there numerous times and they didn't have lifeguards on staff, so therefore it wasn't open. I um, don't want to bash the Stars Complex because I'm hoping they're going to do 
-hmm. what they say. And I do believe they're taking an interest in my ideas and what I'm trying to, I'm actually trying to hold them accountable to do certain things better. So yeah. that's my whole point of attending these meetings. Well, the, the question is, um, if the Dunbar community taxpayers are paying for that facility and their, mon their funds uh, are going to pay for that, are they getting a return on their investment as the other communities are? Um, and, and if there's a problem there, how do we get our elected officials to say, hey, you're taking our money, but you're not giving us the services that our taxpayer, our tax dollars are paying for. How do we, how do we address that? Who's ward and all Well, that here's stuff what I've up? been told. They've been telling me we need numbers. Basically, they need us to come. But I say, what are they coming for? You understand? There's yeah. no programs for the children ages 14 and over. So you want them to come and that way you'll, inst you know, you'll put pl programs into place, but they're not going to come and they've been shut out for so long. And then you're not really advertising anything that you're offering. That's the whole point of me starting this Stars Complex Community Forum where I am the president. And it is all based on me trying to inform and educate the community, local residents on how to access different resources and just, you know, just, just know what's available to them. Mm. Now, I, I think, uh, and of course, I am not bashing STARS. I, STARS does what the city tells them to do. Correct. So if I'm going to bash somebody, look at it, zoom in on me, I'm bashing the city. <laughs> if our kids are licking, our, our kids, our kids don't pay taxes. Adults and parents pay taxes. Correct. I guess they pay taxes when they buy some chicken or something like that or some uh, coffee or whatever they buy or whatever. They pay sales tax, but our, uh, if the parents in the community are paying for facilities, it's not a private thing, they should have access to those facilities, the same access that others that are paying the same amount of taxes should have. Now, we're going to go to break in a few minutes uh, uh, right now, but... We're going to come back and we're going to talk about okay. uh, when you meet and what things you got coming up and, and, and how we can help uh, us get the right return. The same return. Don't want better. We just want the same access. Exactly. We'll be right back. Uh, stay tuned, please. The City of Fort Myers has supported new and early stage businesses by providing a location and technical assistance to new business owners. Tenants also have access to free business consulting, professional receptionist office, free Wi-Fi, two conference rooms, a large training room, copier and fax. Many new businesses now operating successfully have had their start at the Southwest Florida Enterprise Center. If you have a business idea, call 239-321-7085 and come join us. Hello, I'm James Middlebrooks with the Community Press. I'm here to let you know that we have a community paper that is just going all around Fort Myers, Florida. I have three other people that are working with me, and that is Veronica Barber, Pablo Williams, and we call him Bodie, who is our circulation manager. We are working for you. We want you to know that this is the community paper for us. We want to put stories about what's happening, good stories about what's happening in our community. We want to do things on the local level, on the state level, on the national level. But we are sincerely about the local level. But we are so happy that we can report to you 28 pages of good stuff. We're reporting about the churches around this community. We're reporting about the community, about the uh, fraternities and sororities. We're reporting about people who a lady just, a lady just graduated from high school and she's 78 years old. I think that's remarkable. We are reporting about people who live the longest around here. We have a young lady who's 116 years and she's still around. We love what we are doing and we are proud of giving you the report to you from the community press.
Thank you and have a great day. about churchgossip.net? Listen up, there's an exciting new place where you can get all the latest tea in church news. It's called churchgossip.net. At churchgossip.net, you'll find anything from outrageous pastor scandals to what your favorite gospel artist is up to, even a few opinion and inspirational pieces. You name it, churchgossip.net will have it. So come check us out. Tell a friend and a family member about churchgossip.net and don't forget to like and share our page. churchgossip.net, the number one source for all your church tea. I was recently in an auto accident. Do I have a case? If the accident was someone else's fault and you were injured, then yes, you have a case. As a matter of fact, even if you were partially at fault for the accident, you may still have a case. So give me a call. Hello, my name is W. Earl Sparrow, and I'm excited to be the new host of Pillars of Success. Tune in every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. only on communitytv1.com. Welcome back to CTV One's Pillars of Success. My name is W. Earl Sparrow, Jr. I'm your host. And again, we have in the house Ms. Crystal Lyons Johnson, um, president of the STARS uh, community forum, and uh, we were talking about that when, right before we went to break. Um, when, when does the forum meet? We meet every Wednesday because we're trying to um, encourage parent involvement, so we're trying to make it accessible for everybody to mm -hmm. uh, come. If they can't make the first meeting, come to the second one, third, whatever. So right now I'm committed to doing Wednesdays every um, evening at 6.30 to 7.30. 6.30 to 7.30, where? At, at Stars? Stars Complex. We're over in the um, computer lab. Actually, we had more involvement, so we went to Studio B. Okay. I didn't know there was a computer lab. There. Yes. Do they have any programs going? Well, the everything, the Stars is a great program. They have a lot going on mm -hmm. in, the, in the program. So, but the computer lab is not accessible to the children after 5.30. They lock it up. The game room is not accessible to the children after 5.30. They lock it up. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. That's my whole point is to say you don't offer all these, pro these things for, for children 15 to 18 of their interests. You get what I'm saying? Things they yeah. would like to do is not offered at the stars usually in the evening. I believe they're doing better, so, you mm -hmm. know, because I have been kind of pushing it. That's right. So. Um, is that... A, are these hours and the availability issues at the other place, or is that exclusive to the STARS complex? Uh, I'm sorry, say that again. <laughs> is that the availability to the rooms and locking things up at 530 for those kids that are 15 and up, is that a citywide thing that no one, everybody has to shut it down at 530, or...? Is that a staffing thing there? Or? I would say staffing, but I'm not sure about the other. I haven't really followed the other organizations, but mm -hmm. the Stars Complex, I would say a staffing. They, don't always, they feel like they don't always have enough people there mm -hmm. 
to monitor different groups of children. Okay, well, um, how, how long have you been having the parent forum meeting? Well, we've only had three meetings. Mm -hmm. So, um, and our next meeting is this Wednesday coming um, from 6.30 to 7.30 again. And like I said, it's to inform and educate families um, on how to get resources. And it's also a chance for them to come together and kind of discuss what's going on in the community, what are some things that's, that they would like to see change, mm -hmm. and have some input. Have you had any uh, elected officials visit? No. I, um, I'm real excited, though. I have had a lot of involvement from the community. I've had a lot of, uh, I believe his name is Jesse Bryson. He does a STEM program. Right. And, things like that, and he's offering services, and um, you have the, I uh, met her, forgot her name, but her name is, her first name is Amber, and she does the Pop Warner football, That's been, and been she been, wants yeah. to partner and have her children know it's more to life than just playing football, so she wants to, Ooh, so we're coming together, it's, it's a big melting pot, and I'm liking that, because I just, that's what I want, I want us to come together, I feel like in Fort Myers, they have lost um, the unity of knowing how to love each other, and that's part of our problem. You lead by example. If you want to see our children change this behavior and things, we have to learn how to come together as a whole. You know, not just about, everybody's got great programs going on over here, over here, over here. Let's come together. That's what the community forum was developed for. And this is, uh, this is Earl Sparrow from the outside again, outside looking in. Um, a lot of that disunity comes from school choice. Correct. If I live in this house, 801 Duval, and you live in 806 Duval Street, and I live here, and I go to Dunbar, and you live there, and you go to Fort Myers. <laughs> That's true. And the person across the street uh, on the other 7, 804 Duval goes to Cyprus, there's no unity there. If anything, there's some tension there because our schools are competing against each other. So we don't ride the bus together. We don't know when each other's birthday is. We don't, uh, uh, we don't do anything together because I, uh, maybe on the weekend when you don't have anything, I don't have anything. So I guess we'll go outside and, and talk. But um, with schools, it, it drives me crazy how uh, my daughter goes to uh, Dunbar Middle School and there are about four or five different bus stops in the same neighborhood. They go to different schools. I'm like, how y'all do that? But I mean, but um, because all the kids in Dunbar community don't go to Dunbar, because uh, uh, maybe perhaps, you know, the Stars Complex could be the one thing that everybody has in common. Everybody is a part of that uh, uh, Everybody knows and can remember swimming in the pool and playing basketball right. and, and baseball and softball and all these other programs because they, don't, they can do that in unity together there. They can't because of everybody goes to different schools and everything else, even kids. Uh, I, I went from one of the benefits of, of, of my school system in St. In St. John's County, I went to one elementary school and everybody in my area went to that one elementary school. We were bused out there, but we were bused together. Right. Uh, we went to one middle school, Murray Middle School, and then we went to St. Augustine High School. So I've had kids, uh, my classmates, I've known for 13, all from K to 12. And some of them went to high school, college with me, Florida a and University. So uh, we were together. We know each other in and out. We remember when we also had to remember fights. We remember all those other little things right. that add to our community. But that's, a, uh, that's something that uh, I, I see a lot of potential for, that unity to go there. I mean, we used to go to church together, but then churches right. are split just like everything else. Correct. So where do these kids know each other? They saw somebody shoot. Who shot somebody? Well, I don't know. And, they don't know them. And like you said, the Stars Complex would be a per perfect opportunity to bring togetherness. It's a time where the kids can all come. It's no uh, separation. It's, we're all here to enjoy and have fun and take part of whatever the Stars is offering. Yeah. 
So that's, that's awesome. I, I think um, uh, I really appreciate that you could take your kids somewhere else and you could take them to this other pool and you have access to, uh, to some things that other people don't. Correct. And to um, volunteer your time, and then you're not getting paid to do this. No, I'm not. You're not trying to run for office next year. No, I'm not. Not next year. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, to take on all of the children of this neighbor, of the Dunbar community, and say, hey, we should have better, we could have better, let's have better. I appreciate it, and I salute you for that. Thank um, you. How can, um, how can we, and the audience is watching this, how can they uh, raise their voices and besides coming to the meetings? Is there anything that specifically that you want them to bring to the meeting when they come? Or, or? I want them to bring their ideas, bring their children. It's, it is a family affair. They can bring their children because, like I said, the star says they need us to come out mm -hmm. in order to make some changes. So the more, I, the, more the merrier for me to get for, for us as a community, as a whole, to get things that we want and see things in place, we have to come out. We have to show our faces. We have to give our, our opinions and say what we want and need. Mm -hmm. um, for me, my whole, I'm a single mother of four. I have three sons and a daughter. And I need this as much as I want to give it. Mm -hmm. I need that support. I'm looking for my village. Right. Because it, it is it's a very difficult task to be a, a mother today and be single. So, as I mean, I work extremely hard at it. So I feel like I'm a good mom. Happy yes. Mother's Day Happy to Mother's all Day. the we'll, good mothers. We'll talk about that. We'll touch on that a little bit later. <laughs> um, but uh, that I am blessed that me and my wife can work together. That she can go do what she needs to do, and I can pick the kids up. I can drop the kids off if my daughter's dragging her butt and <laughs> she can't find her laptop or something like that. Correct. My wife can just go ahead and go to work and I can drop her off. So uh, I, my wife, uh, if she had to uh, go out of town for the weekend or something like that and I had to get the kids ready for church and brush their hair and get them dressed, oh boy, it's a, it's, we got <laughs> some problems. So I, I don't know how y'all do it. Um, and there's single dads out there too. And, Correct. And, um, and you know what? Let's transition to that. I, I, I see on Father's Day that's coming up, I see a lot of single mothers saying, listen, I'm the mom and I'm the dad. It's my day too. And I'm having to see happy, mother, happy Father's Day to my mother cards and stuff like that. How do you feel about like, I don't, I don't frown on it, but me personally, my mother and father have been married 43 years, mm -hmm. so I definitely believe in dads. Mm -hmm. um, my children have a relationship with their father. It's not what I would like it to be, but mm -hmm. they have a relationship. And that's the thing what moms, single moms, have to do. Unfortunately, it's difficult, mm -hmm. but you have to be the bigger person in some situations. That's on both ends, actually. It is on both ends, and I, that's... Take the high road. It's matured to put, uh, put your kids' needs ahead of Correct. your conflicts. It's mature. It shows growth to be the bigger person to uh, not say X, Y, and Z, and your daddy did this, and your daddy did this, and your daddy did your daddy, your right. daddy, your daddy. Right. Guess what? That poison that you just, that's called self-fulfilling prophecy. Guess what? Guess who's going to be some crappy fathers? Because that's what's been fed to them that to be a father is to not be here. And I don't want to be recognized that, as a father. Not X, Y, and Z. <laughs> so, and that, 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 that uh, and it burns me up every year, and I'm just probably right. going to deactivate my Facebook account um, um, around <laughs> On that Father's time. Day, huh? Yeah, around that time. So it, it's, it's good to, that you're strong enough and you're able to do the work, but. It's so much that you do. It's so much that Jesse, our producer, does. Uh, it's so much that uh, so many people do for free. It's so much. Th so many things we do behind the scenes that uh, we don't need credit for. Right. The work needs to be done. 
the word needs to be done. And what happened with Prince? Prince passed away over the, uh, between our last tapings. Since he's passed away, all of these people are talking about all of these things that Prince funded himself. All of these things that uh, appearances he made, all of these things, charities that he contributed yes, he his time mm -hmm. and energy and resources towards. He could have been like, look at me, look at me, look at me, all the stuff I'm doing. Uh, but he didn't. So I salute you for that. I think it's uh, uh, out of that selfish, selflessness, your kids are going to pick up the ball and go with it. And your grandkids are going to pick up the ball with it. Long time. Come on, right. knock, 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 knock on the wood. I don't know. <laughs> Long time for now. Right. Uh, uh, once they're ready and married and all that stuff, uh, it's, it's uh, stable. But um, uh, I appreciate that, that you're going and hitting, because uh, your kids, you said at the village. It's about that village. If we had that village in place, we can help each other. And that village is, is deteriorating it. And we got a village. It's called Stars Complex. Correct. <laughs> and uh, let's contribute what we can to it. And I mean, we do everything, but that's the beauty about having a village. You don't have to do everything every time. You can help out uh, as, as needed. So um, any uh, happy Mother's Day again. And thank you for coming on our show. If uh, you have Can I anything. say happy Mother's Day to my mom? You may. Pastor Pearly Lyons. Um, of the Abundant Life Apostolic Faith Church is my mom, and she is wonderful. I just love her. So happy Mother's Day, Mom. And all of the other mothers. <laughs> and all are... the other mothers. And I also I... want to give a shout-out to all of my family and friends that mothers passed away. I know this is going to be a rough time for you. Yes. Uh, we love you, and we appreciate you, and cherish your memory, and honor that memory by continuing to do and live the life that they wanted you to live. That's our show for today. Thank you for coming and watching and spending a little time with us here at CTV1. Pillars of success. Have a wonderful Mother's Day.